Landlords of Reddit. What is the weirdest or most disturbing tenant you have ever had? Not a landlord but was an RA. Resident advisor. For dorms in college. We didn't necessarily evict but we definitely saw some crap when we did the final inspections of rooms after the academic year was over. In any case, one year there was this girl who had a single room. Most rooms were two to her room. And she was super quiet. I'd say hi to her in the hallways and stuff but mostly she kept to herself. When the year was up, she signed up for a room checkout inspection but when I went in, she was already gone. That's not that unusual. Sometimes things happen. But usually students will let their aunt know if they won't physically be there for the inspection. I did my usual check of stuff. Okay the fridge is cleaned out, nothing in the drawers, etc. And everything was pretty normal. Then I opened her closet door. There was an entire freaking self portrait mural covering her entire closet wall. Painted in her own blood. There was a lot of weird crap I saw as an Ra. But that was probably the weirdest. Our tenant burnt down our house. The husband would abuse his wife by throwing petrol, gasoline, on his wife's arm and then setting it on fire. And one day he got drunk, doused his wife's arm with petrol, and the carpets and the nearby curtain, and burned about 80% of the house. You win the worst tenant award. Had a tenant who started doing M. He got obsessed with Chuck Norris and fake karate stuff. He had two little dogs he started training to kill. Only the dogs were tiny and couldn't do much. He got really demanding and also did not pay rent for 3 months. I finally told him he had to leave. He got very angry and called the city. The city told me to evict him. So I did. He destroyed the place and at age 40 plus his parents came to pick him and his nunchucks and killer dogs up. First of men are crappy tenants. I'm sorry but I love the mental image of a 40 year old training two chihuahuas to kill. There was this one guy, who had a small family as a downstairs neighbor who were constantly complaining about him making excessive noise. Many noise complaints were filed, and the police were called multiple times. Neither we nor the police actually heard him making noise though, and he kept pleading that he always kept it quiet, and that the noise wasn't him. The weeks went by, and they kept arguing, taking up most of our time with complaints and attempts to negotiate an agreement so they would stop arguing. We later got a phone call from the man's downstairs neighbor. They were hysterical and told us to come over immediately. When we arrived, we found that he had sawed a hole in his floor and taken a giant crap down to the neighbor's living room. Now that's what I call commitment. Upstairs carpet ruined with fertilizer because they grew weed in there. Wallpaper ruined by pouring ashes from the stove behind the bed. Downstairs wooden floor ruined and needed to be sanded. Window smashed. One door had a hole in it made with an axe. Rent and paid and loud parties in the yard. Needless to say, we went to court. One truck driver's family on the other hand managed to turn white bathroom sink and tiles almost black. An accomplishment in itself. Not to mention not paying the rent. Multiple tenants over the years. From the past 15 years I can count exactly one who paid rent on time and kept the place in good condition. 1. I would sell the dang place tomorrow and quit being a landlord. But I'm not the only owner so it's not exactly up to me. My friend works in real estate. Neighbors complain of foul smell coming from one of the apartments her company manages. The tenant is a man in his 30s. Nice and proper. Nothing weird about him but the complaints keep coming and they are left with no choice but to take action. When they finally get in, the place is deserted but there is crap everywhere. Like piles of fesses in the bathtub, in corners of the room. The guy just chat everywhere and apparently enjoyed collecting it or something. It was really bad, and it traumatized all the people involved. The fesses had been sitting there for a while too. They had a company clean up the mess and couldn't find the guy if I remember correctly. Weird story. One time I had a pizza delivery going to an old diner. My boss at the time was familiar with this place and just gave me the raised eyebrows good luck when I dispatched. I arrive there and it's a real old in across the street from the steps to a high traffic train station. First floor was the diner itself, limited menu hours, selling almost exclusively coffee breakfast, all account from aunt's very old beat up looking with mechanical cash register, likely only patronized by early morning train riders and random truckers. I ask the sweet old lady if someone ordered Papa John's and she sighs and says oh is it locked, let me get him, she returns with a sweet old man who takes me outside, 
hands me a key, and directs me to a flight of outdoor stairs. I go up, unlock the second level entrance, and find myself looking down the dusty, dark hallway of an old inn. I had no idea what to expect, but doubted anyone was actually staying in this place. Maybe there's a worker doing a repair? I walk down, calling out Papa John's and reach a partially open door. Greeting me at this room was a massive, 300 plus LBS, woman in a huge dirty pink onishi. She opened the door and what can only be described as a wave of burning taste violated my senses. It smelled like some harsh ammonia mixed with mildew mixed with BO. I could taste it and had to keep blinking to keep my eyes from burning. The woman was barefoot, wearing only this huge onishi that was missing buttons, revealing her pale flabby nakedness, with her shoulder length very greasy blonde hair. She was polite enough and paid for the pizza with exact change and apologized that she couldn't tip. When she went to count coins, I peeked into her room and it was very shocking. There were empty cans of beans all over, a stack of filthy mattresses facing a dresser that had an old CRT TV atop it, covered in empty bean cans, a huge tower of stacked cases of said beans, and a pile of filthy clothes. The wooden floor had no carpet and looked wet rotting. Everything looked wet rotting. This was about 6 years ago and I still remember it like it was yesterday. I still ponder their arrangement. Were the elders running the diner her parents? How long has she been living like this? When did it all go wrong? I have had the same old lady tenant since I bought the building. She chain smokes, watches TV, and collects social security. That's it. Whenever there's an issue, even if it doesn't concern me, I get a phone call every 15 minutes, with a 30 second voicemail each time, until I call her. Cable goes out, Steven, it's Janice, complaint and threat about moving. It's snowing, Steven, it's Janice, complaint and threat about moving. Other tenants making noise at 2pm, Steven, it's Janice, complaint and threat about moving, over and over and over, in her raspy smoker voice, she doesn't understand the concept of I'm at freaking work you idiot, it's gotten to the point where I'll listen to the first 5 seconds of the first voicemail and just delete the rest. My mom bought a double wide trailer home and rented it to her friend and his gf, whom my mom hated. Well after a particularly ugly blowout between her friend, his gf, and his best friend, my mom evicted them. The friend moved his bff in without her knowledge and then his bff stole my mother's, who's in a wheelchair, handicap van. So when we get the house back, it is trashed. The house smelled like weed. The whole house was filthy with trash from parties they threw every night. The one bedroom had no wall and I found a shrine type. It was so nasty. Then to top it all off there was a mountain of trash on the back porch so high I needed to hire pros to come get it all cleaned. I ended up moving in a month later and was still finding crap. From razor blades to used needles and a baggie of crack. He's in jail now for selling H. A baby's daddy was staying with one of my section 8 tenants. One time he got high on crack and was dancing naked outside in the street in the middle of the night. The police came, tasered him, and took him to the emergency room. He walked back home the next day in his hospital gown. Dad's a landlord. He had one property where the guy was retired navy and lived in the house when my dad bought it. They had arrangement where the guy would take care of the upkeep of the house in exchange for reduced rent. So my dad hadn't been there in several years. Turns out the guy became a cokehead and had a bunch of other cokeheads living with him. Plus his kids and their kids. Dad had to evict them and when we went in the house looked like something from hoarders. Trash and cockroaches and stuff everywhere. According to the neighbors they used to send the children around with buckets to steal water from people's hoses. They were stealing electricity and cable. And even though they hadn't had water in months, they continued using the toilets. We had a company that removes trash come out and they wouldn't even make an offer on the job. We had to gut the place ourselves and we carried this toilet full of cokehead crap out to the trash thing. I still remember the dry heaves. There were also less clothed pictures of girls that were definitely illegal, as these girls definitely weren't even 16. The thing that I thought was the saddest was a note from one of his kids teacher. The teacher was begging the father to actually show up to her parent teacher conference. You could tell she was annoyed and had waited for him on several occasions before, and she was legitimately concerned with the child's welfare. 
My parents had a tenant that committed suicide in a closet. He lived alone and was pretty reclusive so we didn't find him until a day or two later. I didn't see the body or anything, but I had to repaint that closet. Still doesn't sit well with me. A friend's parents used to rent out a room. The room was opposite the only bathroom in the house and not too far away from the kitchen. They had a tenant. Let's call him Jeff. After about a month of not seeing Jeff my friend's parents checked out his room. He was unconscious on the bed. Needles all around him and loads of bottles of pee under his bed and plastic bags full of crap. I had a tenant tell me when they moved in that they worked for the agency, meaning CIA I guess, and make all these demands once they got their key. Like that they wanted new security cameras only posted at one specific neighbor's door, because that tenant was their mark, and when I refused they hung up obviously fake ones, made out of soda cans, tin foil, and string spray painted silver, pointed at my door. I lived on site and he started watching me whenever I left or even got the mail. When I tried to take down his fake security cameras, he called CPS on me. I don't even have kids. I'm a property manager. The tenant was fine. Old lady, never late on rent. One month she did not pay and it was already the 15th. We tried calling and sending notices with no response. Finally I decided to investigate further before filling a eviction because as I said she always paid on time. I start by calling her work and they tell me she hasn't shown up for 2 weeks either. So I go to the house and as I'm standing in front of the door I can smell the stench. I let myself in with our copy of the key and she's lying on the couch 2 weeks dead. Her skin wasn't even a human color anymore. As soon as the door opened the neighbor came outside and threw up all over his lawn. What a lot of people don't know is, at least in Texas, the coroner will take the body but we're stuck with cleaning the rest of the death mess. Like I said she was a good tenant but most definitely my worst experience as a landlord. I had a tenant lock a dog and her puppies in a bathroom until there was a couple inches of crap covering the whole floor and bathtub. We obviously evicted him and called the sp car, but that didn't help with the mess. Water was included in the rent. So she decided to run a carpet washing company in the house. Ruined the laminate flooring by drying the carpets over it and accumulated a massive water bill. I didn't own this property, and was assuming management over it after the owner fired the previous management company for gross negligence and incompetence. They'd let some real animals move in. The toilet had jammed so they had started simply crapping in the tub. That turned into a hazmat situation in a hurry once we realized that the cast iron tub had a crack in it and was leaking down a wall into the basement. The same basement that they were illegally subletting. Fire code violation. There were dozens of other things wrong with them too. Including breeding and beating pits without letting them outside. Having active warrants in another state for suspected human trafficking. And attempting to shoot the warden during the eviction. Amazingly, there was no evidence of drug use. I rent out my basement suite and had a guy punch holes in my walls 3 weeks after moving in. More interestingly, though, was when I worked at a storage unit company and had a homeless man renting a storage unit to sleep in. He never admitted it, but you could see from around the corner that the only thing in his storage unit was a mattress. He'd come almost daily at some point in the morning, go inside his unit, shut the door, and not come out for about 3-4 hours. I never said anything to him or the managers because he always made his $250 rent every month and never bothered anybody. My father and mother got a few small houses when the housing bubble popped a few years back and have made very well for themselves renting them out. This was when I was in my undergrad and was pretty removed from the situation. While visiting home one weekend my dad asks for help in cleaning up after a tenant recently moved out. He told me it was bad but I wasn't really sure what to expect. We get to this place and holy crap. These people were living like animals in my opinion. There were cigarettes put out on the wall. Beige carpet turned grey or black from dirt and filth. Many carpentry nails stuck all over the wall. Like too many to have been hanging things. Carpet vastly stretched out in all rooms. Sharpie and crayon all over their kids walls and the hallway. A refrigerator full of food and meat that they unplugged before leaving. A little over a week before we got in to clean. Clothes. Dishes. Furniture. CDs. DVDs. Electronics and so much more just abandoned. And the final thing that I recall was the 2 or 3 mil crits of adults DVDs. 
These people had a dang library of it. Plus the adult toys we found all over. Mainly master bash and sleeves and dildos. Now, my father is a pretty combative and confrontational guy. He likes his property taken care of and hates the bum mentality or when people live like animals. Turns out, he knew where the woman worked after learning the boyfriend skipped town. He goes to the gas station and tells her to get clean her crap out, hence the week and half delay in getting there to clean. After that he goes to talk to her again and is told by the boss she hasn't shown up since and is presumed to have skipped town as well. I guess we'll never know what happened to them. If you're wondering, we sell what we can of what's abandoned to compensate for the repairs and costs of cleaning. Clothes, dishes and the like get cleaned and donated usually. We did not attempt to wash and donate the master bash and sleeves and dildos. My dad once had a guy with two children who asked my dad to evict him because rent was expensive and he wanted to get a council house. If my dad had legally evicted him, he'd be higher on the priority list. My dad was a landlord and he had to deal with lots of crazy people. I'm not sure about the privacy of most stories but there is one that will always stick out. The man that tried to smoke out his neighbors. A lot of my dad's tenants were somewhat out there but this guy was long gone. His upstairs neighbors were annoying him to the point where he actually set his apartment on fire to smoke them out. It was also supposed to be a suicide attempt but according to him, it got too hot so he left. The tenant got sued, but pled insanity so I don't know what happened to him. But I remember my dad had to pay all of the repair costs because the tenant apparently couldn't. Not a landlord but an eviction story. I actually have a lot of them because me and my best friend worked for Service Master when I was in college and the two of us did the repossession cleanups. That's when people don't pay and or go to jail and or die so we go in and clean everything. It was the only job that paid well at Service Master but I saw some crap. Suicides, entire fridges filled with something out of re 7, toilets covered in crap. Anyway, the one that actually disturbed me was this time we actually found a pretty heinous crime. This guy was living out in the country renting a trailer and the entire floor was covered in random garbage. Nothing too unusual until we got into the spare bedroom. The garbage was stacked to about our chests so we were cleaning it out and throwing it in our dumpster out front. We got close to the bottom and started finding polaroids of random crap around the property. We looked at a few and then just started shoveling them in garbage bags when me, or it could have been my friend, found one of a naked boy. It was just absolutely disgusting. I remember starting to sweat and feeling incredibly sick. Then we started taking some pics back out and finding more and then we figured out that these were actually pictures from around the property and there were multiple children. So this guy personally took the photos. We told our boss and we got relocated out of there immediately. He told us to drop what we were doing and go home for the day. Since we were from another state and our boss never told us the name of the guy, we never found out what the whole story was with it. I still wonder about the kids I saw and if they are okay. One of my residents was a paranoid schizophrenic and thought his upstairs neighbors were whispering his name through vents and gassing him out with poison. When he finally abandoned the apartment, he had filled every possible hole inside the place with insulation. Every outlet, vent and even windows were completely blocked off. He also tore out all the ductwork for the AC and owed about $8,000 in damages. He had a roommate, who wasn't on the lease, that used one of the bathrooms as a rim lab. I spent about 6 months renovating one of our nicest homes. 5 bedrooms, new flooring, new kitchen, new bathroom, the whole shebang. A family moves in, mum, dad, and 3 kids. Pay rent on time for like 5 months then everything goes downhill. They won't pay, they won't answer the door. Legal battle ensues, and eventually after 6 months we get them out. But they obviously weren't happy about that, so on their way out. They rip out every bathroom fitting and all the floors, take a sledgehammer to the stairs, and start tearing up downstairs. But then they took out a supporting wall, and half the house came down. It took so much time and money to repair, they were lucky not to kill themselves and apparently their children were encouraged to join in the destruction. They ran off and were never charged. We had to sell the house due to lack of funds for repair. Who lets their kids do that with them? My stepmom rented her house to a guy who she later found out was having constant drug fueled parties. 
When she went to inspect it, she also then discovered that a water pipe had burst and had been running water all over for a good month or two and he never bothered to tell her, causing $25,000 in damages that took them months to repair. Since it had gone unreported for so long insurance refused to pay for it. After fixing it she decided she'd never rent again. When she talked to her insurance company they told her that rentals are cheaper to insure than empty homes because there's someone there to report damage. We couldn't help but laugh at that. I managed low income housing and had quite a few interesting tenants. One of the worst was a family with three small kids. They had been living in a campground and were desperately looking for a place. They had no security deposit but the only apartment that I had available was one that needed some repairs. The worst part was a big hole in the floor in the living room. He agreed to fix it and be the handyman in exchange for not needing a security deposit and a deduction in rent. Fast forward a month later and the guy and his family have just disappeared. After a few days of not being able to get a hold of him I put up a notice to enter the property. After waiting another couple days I go in and it looks like they've abandoned the place. As I'm walking out the guy and his family pull up to the apartment. He goes ballistic and starts screaming at me for going into his apartment. He tells me that they are going to move out that day, that he can no longer live in a place like that apparently they were on a waiting list for housing and had just gotten a place. After they move out I went in to clean the place. He had removed the repairs he had done, including putting the big hole back in the floor and had left filth and crap everywhere. The refrigerator had nothing but rotten food in it. I also had a tenant banging on my door at midnight demanding we put him up in a hotel because his power was shut off because he didn't pay the bill. Another lady moved out, locked her keys inside the apartment and had all four burners of the stove on high. The final straw was the owner coming to my work one day threatening to kill me because my wife told him that I had taken the rent in, while I actually forgotten it at home. He had a lot of anger problems. I used to work maintenance for some lower end apartment buildings. I've seen some really torn up units. Had a couple of them units. One couple that had trash piled up the sides of every wall. After they didn't pay one month we found out he had been shot by the police. And they were both in jail. I think the worst was a really young. 1819. Couple who fought constantly. We kicked them out for either the constant complaints or non-payment. I don't remember. When we got in to turn the apartment we found it completely destroyed. The master bedroom had dog crap embedded in every inch of the carpet. They locked their dog in when they left every day. Cigarette burns in the carpet. Holes with bits of beer bottle glass sticking out. My best guess is they would get angry at each other and hurl beer bottles across the room. All of the ceiling tiles had been demolished and the doors kicked in, and my personal favorite, there was a large person shaped hole going through the wall of the hallway into one of the bedrooms as if someone had been thrown into it. He weighed approximately 120 pounds, and I'd put his wife at around 240. He was likely the victim there. I hope they got a divorce. They lived there for about 6 months. My dad is a landlord. He heard that one of his tenants wasn't going to pay rent cause he was arrested, for M. The big tip off for the cops that this guy was getting high was the running down the street with a butcher knife, naked, with a welding helmet on. Naturally my dad thought that there were some embellishments until we went to clean out the apartment and there on the kitchen counter was a welding helmet and a butcher's knife. I was brought on as a property manager of an apartment building because the owner didn't know what the frick he was doing. One of the things I had to do was encourage individuals to relocate. I'm not talking about good renters. I'm talking about the previous owner's cokehead son that hadn't paid rent since dad sold the property and his boyfriend. These two fricks rented a room to a local escort who would bring her johns there. They also sold drugs out of the apartment so weird people would be getting buzzed in at all hours. I set up security cameras. Hung out in front of the at building at all times, and knocked on the door at various times throughout the day. Finally they got fed up and moved on, but they left a destroyed apartment. There were three shopping carts, multiple dish network receivers and dishes, adult magazines, polaroids of the boyfriend cross-dressing, adult toys, and so much trash. The place took a lot of rehab. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.